FACO emulsification in a soft cataract comes with its own level of challenges. One, because of the soft consistency, the surgeon, when he attempts to scut, say like while performing a stop and chop procedure, will end up getting too deep too soon, which can compromise the posterior capsule. Moreover, its extreme soft consistency makes it very difficult to impale and hold the nucleus for a direct chop and therefore makes the FACO chop procedure extremely difficult too. And finally, the epinuclear material as well as the cortex can be extremely sticky, which can pose its own level of challenges. Thus, there need to be some strategy in place in how to manage them. Now, this patient with a lamellar congenital cataract was managed by a coaxial irrigation aspiration alone. By virtue of its softness, almost always requires no phaco emulsification energy. So, mere irrigation aspiration itself allows for complete removal of the cataract. So also, this young patient with a total cataract following trauma is completely managed with irrigation aspiration alone. So I believe that the safest, simplest and the most optimal technique of managing a very soft cataract is what's demonstrated here. A hydro prolapse of the endonucleus into the anterior chamber followed by its aspiration and complete removal. Now this technique of hydroprolapse and aspiration will actually reduce the risk of posterior capsular rupture. Now, following a hydroprolapse, if there is a significant nucleus, then all the surgeon needs to do is impale, hold, chop, downsize, and emulsify as demonstrated in this video. So the take home message really is that whether you do a hydroprolapse and aspiration or whether you do a hydroprolapse and chop is largely dictated by the consistency of the nucleus that you are dealing with. Whilst attempting a hydroprolapse, once the nucleus is prolapsed, after putting viscoelastic behind the nucleus, it's important to support the nucleus with a second instrument held behind the nucleus so that it prevents the nucleus from falling back and this aids in its easy and successful emulsification. In this case of a soft polar cataract after hydrodelineation, the nucleus is impaled with the phaco probe and whilst holding it is just lifted out of the bag after which it is suitably downsized and emulsified. Should you choose to emulsify these soft cataracts within the capsular bag itself, the horizontal chop technique is probably the best option. Now here's how it's done. In this technique, a blunt tip chopper is passed deep to the rexis, hooks onto the equator and then is pulled towards the phaco probe and both are separated resulting in an effective chop. The other technique of managing a soft cataract is by performing a stop and chop. In this technique, a groove is made from one end to the other of the heminucleus down its center. The depth of about almost 90% is reached after which two instruments are used to bisect the nucleus into two heminuclei, after which each heminucleus is then subsequently downsized and emulsified. And finally, when faced with a nucleus which is soft, yet has a significant nucleus, the technique of choice is a direct chop, wherein the nucleus is impaled, a chopper is used to divide the nucleus into two equally sized heminuclei, after which, turn by turn, each heminucleus is further downsized by the technique of direct chop again, and each of these fragments is then emulsified turn by turn.